Hey everybody, this is Chris with The Ancient Scholar, and today what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk a little bit about the chemistry of uh, nerve agents. Uh, specifically, I'd like to talk about the organic phosphorus uh, nerve agents. And I know I've done some videos on these, but this will be a slightly different video than the ones I've already done. This is going to be very uh, provincial um, and a very focused video on a very certain aspect of um, uh, nerve agents, uh, the organic phosphorus agents specifically. So what I'd like to do is I would like to go ahead and put a molecule up here. I'll draw the molecular structure uh, for one of these agents in particular. Um, let me go ahead and choose a different color here. Show up a little, a little better. Um, I'm gonna so we get carbon hydrogen here, and then a couple of methyl groups here, and a methyl group here, and then this will go to oxygen here, and then this will go down here to phosphorus, and then I'm going to have a double bond to an oxygen here, and a single bond to a fluorine atom here, and then I'm going to have a methyl group here. All right, so this is a typical, um, one of the typical organic phosphorus agents. This is actually an agent called sarin. All right, this is a sarin. Um, this uh, belongs in the group, this is a group three organic phosphorus uh, nerve agent, um, which is known as the cyanophosphates. Um, or a halophosphate, rather. Um, uh, both cyano and uh, halophosphates uh, belong in group three. This is a halophosphate um, because it is halogenated, and this fluorine atom right here is, is what acts as, as, as the halogen. Uh, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, um, and iodine uh, being the, the halogens that we speak of. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, so what's so interesting that I want to talk about? Well, what I want to talk about is I want to talk about the phosphorus atom here, okay? Because this is central um, to how this molecule works. So, um, you have a methyl group, you have fluorine, which if you remember from my other videos, um, fluorine acts as a leaving group. Um, which, uh, because of the electronegativity of fluorine, it, it doesn't really, it's, not, it's not, not at the top of your list when you think of things that act as good leaving groups um, in organic chemistry, or chemistry in general, um, but fluorine does, and that is due in part to the phosphorus kind of being polarized, if you will, because of this double bond to, to the, the oxygen, which has a, a pretty high electronegativity on its own. Um, so the presence of this oxygen actually enables fluorine to act as a, as a decent leaving group. Um, but be that as it may, what I want to do is I want to talk about phosphorus, and, 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 and what I want to do is I want to look at the electron configuration of phosphorus, which is uh, neon. I'm just going to start at the, I'm going to do the shorthand here. Um, we'll start at the, um, the um, noble gas um, and all of the, the core electrons there. Uh, which aren't really going to be relevant uh, to what we're talking about today. So it's going to be neon, uh, 3s2, uh, 3p3. Um, so you might look at, if I was going to do an energy level diagram, it might look something like this, um, where um, I'm dealing with the same shell, okay? So all six of these electrons are in the same shell. Okay, so n, the same n equals three, but we know that um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a mono electron, uh, tronic atom, an atom with just one electron, um, the 3s and 3p orbitals are all degenerate. They're all at the same energy level, but that, those levels split when you have multiple electrons so even though these are in the same shell, and these six um, electrons are in the, the valence shell, okay, 
even though they're in the, the valence shell, um, the, the, the orbitals themselves are going to be at different energies. And um, I've done some other videos on S versus P orbitals, but S orbitals have um, greater uh, penetration uh, probability density toward the nucleus. So the, the S orbital, okay, if this is energy here and this is higher and lower energy here, um, the S, the 3S orbital, is going to be at um, lower energy, whereas my, my, my P orbitals here, okay, uh, P, P, X, Y, and Z, X, Y, Z, okay, those will be at a higher energy level, and then we'll, uh, we'll populate those guys with electrons, all right, so spin up, spin down, and then one, two, three, boom. All right, so there we go. Pretty, pretty typical electron configuration. We got it, okay? So <clears throat> what we have here is we have a total of how many electrons in the valence shell. Um, let's look at this. The valence, the valence shell has how many electrons? Well, it has one, two, three, four, five. It has a total of five electrons. So one way of looking at this is, well, if there are five electrons, I could, in theory, um, maybe this phosphorus could form um, three uh, covalent bonds, right? Because then that would be, um, that would provide three electrons, um, and phosphorus could meet its full octet, uh, octet being eight electrons. Um, and then, then you say, well, um, no, because uh, you know these are paired, and, and so just these are open to bonding here in the p orbitals. So that only gives us, you know, th uh, uh, well that gives us our three here. Um, and look at that, I have three electrons here um, that are, you know, unpaired in their own orbitals. And boy, this just looks like a, a match made in heaven. And so if you were to just kind of glance using just just basic you know basic energy level diagrams and just your um, your Lewis dot structure theory uh, you could draw your phosphorus and then we'll draw our electrons you know that I've got um, let's see one two three um, four five um, the electrons in the valence shell so I could draw one two three four five like that and I have these three unpaired electrons and this it just makes sense that I could have one two three covalent bonds with some other um, atom or molecule to meet the octet rule <clears throat> okay that just that looks like it should work without any real fancy business but let's let's look at the um, the phosphorus here and how many bonds do I have well I have one bond here with the fluorine, I have a bond here um, with, with the methyl group. I have a bond to an oxygen here, and then I have a double covalent two bonds there. So I've got two, three, four, five. So I've got a total of five bonds. Okay, I've got a total of five bonds um, that I need to account for, and I cannot account for that here. Um, looking at at my electron configuration and looking at Lewis dot structure. I simply can't account for this. What's going on? Well, what's going on is we uh, can't use Lewis dot structure. We actually have to use molecular molecular orbital theory, just like we would with carbon, and we can take linear combinations of atomic orbitals, okay, linear combinations, and put them into superposition, and I've done some videos on that superposition. And in the case of the phosphorus, um, the hybridization in phosphorus is very different. You're probably used to carbon and having sp3 hybridization um, when you have carbon and it's four, um, four bonds, uh, four sigma bonds. Um, SP3 hybridization explains that really well, where you hybridize um, the S orbital plus um, 
three key orbitals, right? And then that gives you, okay, when you do that, that gives you four sp3 hybrids. Um, we can do sp2 hybridization if you have a carbon where there's a, a, a double bond and then um, three single bonds, right? sp2 hybridization explains that really well. And then sp hybridization um, explains, uh, you know, triple bond, the, the single bond there. Um, so hybridization is nothing new, but it, it just uh, takes on a new dimension. So in, in terms of phosphorus, so phosphorus we're dealing with n equals three. Um, so what do I have available? What orbitals do I have available in n equals three? Um, at, if, I'm, if I'm just going to use s and p orbitals, and I'm going to do sp3 hybridization with my phosphorus, um, using that, you know, maybe I can get four. I can get four orbitals, okay, total. But I still can't account for the five bonds. I still need to account for five bonds. So what happens is, what other what other orbitals are there in the third energy level? Well, if n equals three, let's find out what my values for l are going to be. Um, and remember, l is um, from zero all the way up to n minus one, okay? So if n equals three, let's find out what we have available. Um, so n minus one, let's start low, n minus one, um, so I have zero, right? L, I always have zero available, so that's an s orbital. Um, do I have one available? Uh, sure, I do, because three minus uh, one is two, um, so I do have one uh, available, uh, which gives me a p orbital, and then three minus one is two, and then I can go all the way up to two, which is, ah, yeah, that's right. We have d orbitals in the third energy level, huh? Um, we just don't normally worry about them until we fill all of the, um, all the s and p orbitals and then fill the 4s orbital that, that we start filling the d orbitals. Oh, yeah, so... I, in fact, have d orbitals, and so what we can do, what that leads to, is that leads to a different type of hybridization known as sp3d hybridization. So um, we, we take a 3s plus um, a 3p plus a 3p plus a 3p plus a 3d, okay? Uh, specifically, um, the specific orbital that we're going to use for this type of hybridization is actually the, the d uh, z squared orbital. Um, oh, my wife is sending me messages about all of her hiking, so hopefully that will go away. Um, because uh, this is this is a handy handy orbital because it is more aligned along the z axis, and we need something that aligns up with the z axis because the kinds of orbitals that we need, uh, we need orbitals, uh, she's sending me pictures now, so you guys just have to deal with that, sorry. <laughs> um, we, we, we need to send orbitals, um, we need to have orbitals that um, can, um, can provide a specific kind of, of uh, a geometry, which is a, um, a, a trigonal uh, bipyramidal um, geometry where you kind of have this 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 kind of this triangle. Okay, so you have orbital here, orbital here, orbital here. Okay, so you have a triangle, but then up 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 here I'm going to have an orbital, and down here I'm going to have an orbital. Okay, so so what happens is if I if I connect, um, it's going to basically give me two pyramids. Okay, I have a a pyramid here, a pyramid here, and then a triangle in the middle, um, and then my phosphorus atom is going to be, you know, here with all the, these hybrid orbitals. Um, so obviously, you know, I have you know my z, z, z axis, and you know my x, x y plane, and the d z squared orbital helps us um, get this kind of configuration. So what I'm going to do, or what I've done, is I've actually plugged um, orbitals in um, to uh, 
to add them in a box here. So here's my add them in a box. And uh, this is not exactly what the SP3D orbitals look like because the atom in the box is specifically designed to solve um, uh, to solve uh, wave functions to provide eigenvalues um, and solutions of, of wave functions of the hydrogen atom only. Um, so they um, we we use a, a base the basis set of, of, of functions that we use for. Um, most of the, the polyelectronic atoms are hydrogen-like orbitals, um, but these are not the exact, I don't think these are the exact uh, functions that we would use for a true polyelectronic atom like uh, phosphorus when we're hybridizing it. I can't actually do that with atom with, um, in a box. Um, there are some other molecular dynamics programs that allow you to do that um, but they, they all seem to be Windows based and they all require um, you to have some, some, some coding knowledge which is not something I've done for, for many years. So what I, basically what I've done is I've done the best I could. Um, and so what I've done is I plugged in um, a 3, 2, 0 which is a D, uh, 3, N equals 3, L equals 2, um, M sub L equals 0 which is a DZ squared orbital. Um, and then I'll plug in a three one zero, which is going to be a um, uh, C a uh, three, and then one L equals one, which is an S orbital zero, is going to be a, a, a PZ PZ um, orbital, and then I'm going to have my um, one two three zero zero which gives me an 3s orbital. So what I get when, when I hybridize these, okay, and then I can actually change how much, um, you know, what percentage, um, you know, do I want more of the, um, the d orbital or more of the p orbital expressed, um, and these are fairly equally expressed. And, and so here I have the hybrid orbital, which is a hybrid of all three of those in superposition, and this actually looks Pretty, pretty, pretty close to if you you know go on the, the internet and look at um, pictures of molecular dynamics simulations and the orbitals. This actually looks pretty similar to what you'll see. This is actually not bad. Uh, um, so you have this low probability density here. You kind of have this inverted little, not really a true torus, but it, it's kind of inverted and it and it is kind of circular. It's hard to see because I'm only looking at one view, and then you have a little bit of probability density here. So this actually is a pretty decent um, first approximation of, um, you know, if you were to actually use um, you know, ab initio techniques, um, I assume you would have to set up and do like a Hartree-Fock um, approximation and, um, and, and then kind of work from there. But this is actually just actually a pretty decent representation of what the sp3d orbital look like and um, so what happens is you get five of these you you get five of these orbitals and these could account not only for the geometry but these could account for those five bonds that we saw in um, sarin the, the, the phosphorus atom um, so that this is actually pretty cool it's a little visual visualization and it's maybe a more more complicated um, application of chemistry in, in a toxicological sense and, and hopefully you guys you know found this interesting um, and obviously this is not something I do a whole lot of um, I am not a quantum or computational chemist uh, I don't even have a degree in chemistry but obviously um, chemistry is a very important part of what I'm studying now so I thought I'd share this with you guys and, and uh, I, f I find it kind of interesting and, and hopefully you guys do as well okay as always thanks for hanging in there guys